station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Ready for the event? I am ready for the event. KAKE TV. This is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is KAKE. How do you hear me? I've got you loud and clear. Welcome to the International Space Station. Thank you so much. Hey, I'm going to uh, start this off uh, kind of a, an intro because we're going to record this. We're going to record it and chop it up. Uh, but uh, I'm going to record kind of the intro to it and we'll go into our conversation, Nick. So uh, thank you so much for doing this. No, it's my pleasure. i uh, thrilled to be able to answer your questions today. All right. We're going to get started here in three, two. So we're joined by a very special guest, and maybe we could say a friend of Good Morning Cake Lanks. It's not his first time on the show. Today, we are talking with NASA astronaut Nick Haig on the International Space Station. Good morning, Nick, and uh, welcome back to Good Morning Cake Land. Yeah, good morning. It's a, it's a thrill to be able to connect with you again from the International Space Station and just share a little bit of the magic that happens here in low Earth orbit. Well, Nick, you are a native Kansan, and, and that's why we're uh, getting to talk to you this morning. We want to talk about your trip. I mean, obviously, you've, you've gone from Kansas, uh, and then you've gone to great heights and here to the International Space Station. You've had the pleasure of riding on two different spacecrafts to get to the International Space Station, both, both the Soyuz rocket and the SpaceX rocket. Tell me about the experience on riding on the, both of those and how they compare. Well, I have to start by saying that any rocket that you're on top of is a thrilling ride. Um, comparing the Soyuz to the Dragon, uh, you know, when you look at the Soyuz, you can you can feel when you're sitting inside the capsule, you can feel the decades of evolution of the capsule, and uh, and and you can you can sense the history of it. Uh, on the other hand, the Dragon capsule is 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 pretty Spartan on the inside. It's very clean, and and it it feels very modern. Uh, but both. Uh, do their job extremely well and reliably. They get us to and from the International Space Station. Well, and you've actually ridden on three rockets, but you've made it to the space station twice. I imagine uh, when you are in flight, uh, there's always that moment now that you're like, okay, are we really going? Yeah, you know, the, the, first, the first attempt wasn't... Uh, wasn't exactly what I was expecting, and uh, and that that's a little bit about what spaceflight spaceflight is like. It, you know, you're always preparing for the unknown or the unexpected. You're always preparing for what could go wrong, so that you're prepared to respond in that situation. And so, you know, it takes us about two years to train to to be ready to launch to the station, and and in those two years, we spend probably 90 percent of our time focusing on what to do when things go wrong hoping that those things never go wrong. Uh, but we're ready, and it's not just the crew that's on board the rocket, it's the ground control teams, uh, mission controls that are spread across the globe. They stand at the ready, they've always got our back, and they're making sure that we uh, get up here, we do the mission, and we get home safely to our families. Tell me about those preparations. Uh, obviously very different, probably getting to do more of your training now and preparations in the U.S. rather than in Russia, but how different are the programs when it comes to the preparation for those two? I think fundamentally the programs are, are pretty similar in the things that they're preparing you for. I think the biggest difference when you're, when you're preparing to launch on a U.S. vehicle from the United States compared to launching on a, on a Russian vehicle launching from, you know, Kazakhstan, uh, the biggest difference is not having to spend 12 months, you know, almost 12 months in Star City, Russia, learning 
all of those Russian systems, that rocket, that spacecraft in Russian, uh, having to speak Russian. Um, and, and so I'd say this time it, it felt a little more comfortable. Uh, it, was, it was all here stateside and, uh, and uh, everything was in my native language. So it made things a lot easier. It also helps having done it before because I have some framework to kind of hang all this training on. Um, so it, both have been fabulous experiences. When you entered the Air Force, the NASA was still using the space shuttle. Uh, and now you have the chance to go up on an American rocket. What can you say about the innovation that you've seen kind of firsthand, uh, just your time being in the Air Force and then in NASA? Yeah, it's been amazing to see the development. When I graduated from the Air Force Academy and joined the Air Force, the first module for the space station hadn't even been launched yet. And, and over the course of 10 years, you know, 15 countries came together and built this foundation, this mission right here, where we've had crews on board for two and a half decades doing science and research and maintaining the station. And I think that has given us this strong foundation that you now are starting to see a lot of acceleration in the, in the private sector in, in other governments, other, other countries getting involved in space. And, and so in recent years, the past five years, we've really start to see that accelerate. It's an exciting time to be involved with space. Um, I gotta say it's growing. And if there's anybody back home that's, that's watching this and thinks, hey, I, I'm interested in space, there's absolutely room for you. It takes a really big team and we could use your skills. What kind of skills do you tell you know a kid in Kansas? I mean, you're from Hoxie. What do you tell a kid in Kansas right now that's watching you saying, I want to do that? What do they need to be thinking about right now before uh, they even apply to NASA or, say, the Air Force? You know, there's not one path to get here, but I, I think some common themes are you need to understand that it's first possible. If you can dream it, you can make it happen. It's gonna take a lot of hard work. And just because you come from rural America, just become, because you come from a small town and not a big city, doesn't mean you're disadvantaged. It's still possible for you too. Uh, but it just doesn't take hard work and determination from yourself. You're gonna stumble along the way, uh, you know, I did. And what it really boils down to is, is being willing to ask for help when you need it and, and offer help to people when they need it. And that connection, that community is what's gonna help propel you along in your career, whatever career you choose. And, and I think that, that you know, growing up in rural America taught me that sense of community in a way that, that really has, has helped me all along my path. And I think that's a gift that everybody uh, back in Kansas really grows up with. When you're flying overhead at 250 miles above the state and you look down and you can maybe pick out Kansas. How does that make you feel? You know, there's there's no greater feeling than to, uh, you know, to just just float and look out the window. I've got a couple windows behind me here uh, out the, uh, the the back end of the, the Japanese uh, laboratory and to go over there and to be able to look out and and to see the Great Plains of the U.S. But, you know, I feel this connection. You know, you feel this connection to home. And when you fly over it, you know, I could be in, in, the, in the cupola, our window to the, to the earth, and I can be in there with, with my crewmates, and, and we'll be looking down, and there's just this connection, this knowledge of, of this, this place on the ground, and I know exactly where we're at. They may not be able to pick out Kansas from Nebraska or Oklahoma or, or any of the Midwest states because it's one great plain. But when I look down, I can see the individual rivers. I can see the individual lakes. I see the cities. I know the people that live there. And, and you just feel, just feel this connection, this longing to, to be home. I imagine that connection uh, is challenging. You've got a family at home. You've got a couple of kids as well. What's it like being a dad in space? Parenting is difficult. Parenting from 250 miles away is even more difficult. 
uh, you know, it makes me really appreciate my wife and, and what she does as, you know, she's effectively a single parent right now, having to shoulder all those responsibilities. Um, you miss milestones. You know, I've got a, uh, a son that's a senior in high school and he's going to graduate this year. And, uh, and so I'm missing a lot of the, you know, those last moments in high school. Um, but you know, at the same time, we get to share this. I get to call and, and share this experience with them. And I, I think that this experience and their understanding of it makes their perspective on the world a little more richer. And, and, and I think that, that collectively as a family, the thing that we've learned over my time at NASA, the you know, decade plus, has been that this mission up here is absolutely worth it. We're working as, as, a, as a globe. We're working multiple countries coming together, trying to study fundamental things about our universe, about ourselves, about our planet, so that we can know more. And that knowledge will help us make life on Earth even better. Well, we're closing in on Christmas. What do you guys have planned next week up there on the ISS? Well, we're definitely going to celebrate Christmas up here. Uh, we, we've got the holiday off, so we actually have a day down. So um, what we're going to do is, is get together as a crew, share a meal. Uh, the meal is, you know, not really going to rep resemble your norm normal Christmas dinner, uh, but it's less about the food that we're eating, and it's more about us all floating around the table and, and, and just communing together and, and sharing our lives. Obviously, we're going to call our family and friends on the ground and, uh, and, and try to share uh, in their celebrations on the ground as well. Uh, it'll be a special time up here, a time to reflect, definitely a time to look out the window just a little bit more and appreciate the vantage that I, that I have up here. Um, yeah, it's, it, it'll, it'll be a nice, uh, a nice pause. Nick, thank you so much for joining us on Good Morning Cakeland. Is there anybody back in Kansas you want to give a shout out to that may be watching? Well, I, uh, I, I'd be hard pressed to mention names because there's so many, uh, but I got to tell you, you know, everybody back in Hoxie, everybody in Peabody, uh, you know, a, a big shout out. I hope everyone has a, a wonderful Christmas, a happy new year, and I look forward to coming and, and visiting the state and visiting all of you uh, and sharing this, this experience. Safe travels, Nick. Godspeed. Hey Nick, before we let you go, Thank we're going to kind of we're kind of wrap. We wrapped up that portion of it, but I want to tell you, um, my friend, uh, classmate of mine from KU, works at SpaceX, Michael Outenhope, and he told me to tell you hi, uh, another Kansan, uh, and we just recently got to talk to uh, University of Kansas uh, grad uh, Laurel, who was a classmate of mine at KU as well. So it's it's great these Kansas connections. You know, everybody thinks it's a, you know, Kansas. When I was growing up in high school, I felt like I was so far removed from the rest of everything that was going on. And you grow up and you realize we're all so connected. This earth is so small and you get these one and two and three degrees separation. I've run into so many Kansans uh, it, just in my 10 years at NASA. It, it's been amazing. It's always a thrill. Well, thank you so much for talking with us. This has been great. And uh, hey, when you come back to Kansas, uh, we'll we'll try to hit you up. We'd love to get you in the studio sometime. Sounds great. Happy holidays to you. Uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Same to you. Thanks. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.